the night before the quintessential match. Hola everyone and welcome to the House of Epo. Chapter 1330 is here, which means that it's time to talk about the bout between Takamura and Keith Dragon. Now, this is only 14 pages long, which means that there is not a lot to really digest compared to the 18 pages that we had last week. But what we do have is some really good in-depth character development. That is right, something that all people fear when it comes to Shonen, and that is developing a character. So we open up the night before the match. After the weigh-ins and the press conference, Takamura is eating a ton of meat, a ton of food, to fill up on power. And the reason that he is doing this is when you do a dramatic weight cut, especially with water weight and just basically fat loss, you're going to really kind of use up your reserves of energy. And so what Takamura is trying to do right now is build that back up. And you'll actually see a lot of boxers come in and they look not necessarily thin, but they look a lot more cut the night before a big match. And the next day, they're one to two sizes bigger because they properly reloaded on the nutrients that they need. Now, without getting into too much detail, some of that involves, you know, a really good hydration cycle where you're drinking Pedialyte um, or Gatorade, water, uh, saline, you know, kind of getting that extra stuff into your system, eating some very saline uh, food, so a lot of salt, or there are people who even do uh, IV injections to kind of get that liquid back in there. And the reason why they're doing that is, again, to help give them a little bit more energy for the next day uh, and to actually protect their body from any further damage that a cut can do. So, Keith Dragon's trainer asks, what was your impression when you confronted him? And Keith says, I liked his eyes. I loved them. And the trainer responds with, I'm not sure what you're talking about, but I think you have identified a strong opponent. And you can see that the strong smell out the strong when it's time to finally face each other in a match. And Keith kind of responds with something that we've seen with Ricardo in the past. He says, I'm sure I won't be lonely tomorrow night. I think I can do it with him. No, we can read each other 10 to 20 moves ahead, i.e., Keith is really looking forward to this fight against Takamura because he truly and utterly believes that he's going to be a great contender um, in the ring. He's going to be able to basically lay all of his Mahjong tiles, I think that's the right word, on the table proverbially and get to really strut his stuff. We know that he's been holding back that he's potentially a left-handed boxer, so a southpaw, or even ambidextrous, which kind of reminds me of Randy Boy Jr., you know? This is something that we don't get to see very often. Somebody who is holding back against Takamura, or at least holding back before they met Takamura, because everyone's had to struggle to get to where they were at. Even, even Eagle had to kind of fight and claw his way up, and he was prepared for a fight with Brian Hawk. But now here we are, Keith Dragon versus Takamura. It's going to be happening in the next day. I'm not going to say next chapter, because I'm not going to make any promises that I can't guarantee on. But we switch the place to Aoki's Ramen Shop. And Takamura gave an order for everyone to assemble there, but he himself is not present. And everyone kind of says, you know, isn't Takamura supposed to be home resting? Aren't you supposed to be getting ready for your big fight tomorrow? It might not be until tomorrow night, but we both know that, you know, if you're a little bit nervous, it could screw up your sleep. If your sleep gets screwed up, it can throw off your entire rhythm because your rhythm is very important as a competitor, as an athlete, as a boxer. You know, you throw it off just a little bit and something could go horribly wrong in the fight. Um, and Kaneda kind of asks, I don't know what he's going to do to us if we hadn't gotten here, um, but that's okay. And Aoki responds with, you know, this is all unreasonable. And we kind of get a little bit more perspective from Ipo on this. He says, however, you know, I do think that you're sincere about boxing, running, and adjusting even before the day of a match. It proves that you just love boxing so so much and it's really something that's important and Tahi kind of says back you know I don't want you to lose to someone who plays mahjong for fun that's just weird why would you why would you want to risk losing to somebody who enjoys something other than boxing because again apparently there is a ton of like backlash like that's almost like losing to somebody who plays chess it doesn't make any sense who cares they you can have multiple hobbies but hey get your mind out of the freaking gutters I don't care about you I do, but not that much. Kimura responds with, 
You know, I heard you came to the Mahjong parlor in your practice clothes. That means you were practicing right up until the last minute, right? He's good at switching off and relieving stress, and I think that is a lot more scary. And the air starts to become heavy. And they're not used to this kind of heavy air before a Takamura fight. They're kind of, you know, Tahe, Kaneda, they're more used to a light-hearted Takamura who's really confident in his ability to win. They haven't really seen him go up against somebody like Eagle or even Brian Hawk. And that's... You know, something that we're going to get to experience with them for the first time. And we're going to get to experience this fight from Ipo, who has gotten to examine and prepare for this fight uh, with Takamura, just in a slightly different way. Um, and so we get, uh, we jump into Ipo saying, yes, I was in a really good mood. Takamura-san was acting like that, but he understood the strength of his opponent when we were praying to God. And... Aoki and Kimura, obviously, at the same time, because they are the exact same person, completely different at the same time, though, respond with, what? That man is asking for a favor from God? That is impossible. That is impeccable. Who who could even understand that kind of thing? And Aoki just straight up says, I don't believe it. And Kimura responds with, is he really that serious of an opponent? Is Keith Dragon really such a threat to Takamura that he has to pray to God to win? And they kind of start trading back and forth and get to thinking, things that I can't do on my own. What did he mean by that? Is there something that Takamura is lacking? Just what is he missing? And again, no one really understands that he's looking out for the coach in this situation. He's trying to pray to the coach to get better, to be better. Um, and so they're kind of misconstruing that. Takamura is not praying to the gods for himself. He's praying to the gods for... For the coach, which is really touching when you get down to it. Um, you know, Kimura asks, speaking of God, did you give him the random straw doll? And Nebo is kind of like, oh, bang. And he puts his hands in his pockets with an absolutely serious face. And that is the end of the chapter. So there's quite a lot to unpack here. Not quite as much as we were thinking of. Um, but we get a lot more character development from Keith Dragon, you know. He purposefully is holding back uh, during his fights to try to make him a little bit more interesting, kind of like Ricardo does. But that is something that you see kind of at the top. People who are really wanting to be the best of the best um, really do look forward to a challenge because if you don't and you're not sharpening yourself, somebody is eventually going to come along and cut you down. And... Keith being excited for the fight gets me excited for what is going to happen. You know, I'm hoping that we don't just get a one-chapter fight. As cool as that would be, I really do hope that we get a nice, big, long fight here. You know, I'm hoping 10, 15 chapters. I know that's going to drag it on. But really get to see this fire build inside of Ippo. It was started by Sendo uh, versus Alfredo. And now it's going to be stoked by getting to see what Takamura is going to do in the ring. That's something very, very important to Ippo, getting to see somebody he considers to be a brother, a friend, an inspiration, honestly. Do something hard and really discover the meaning of strength for himself. And then we get to see how kind of everyone thinks that Takamura is almost hesitant and scared for this fight when realistically, he's just waiting for something to happen to the coach. He's scared for the coach. He's not scared for himself. He's not scared of his opponent. He's scared of what's going to happen to the coach. We're going to start to see this kind of play out more and more during the fight where I'm going to guess that Takamura looks back at the old man and says, watch me bring it back for you. Let's speed this up. And he just goes balls to the wall. Like something that we hopefully haven't gotten to see, you know, this kind of crazy side since Eagle or even Hawk. Like those would be some absolutely amazing scenes, especially with how far the art has come in the past few years. And honestly, I think George is just getting better and better and better with time. So let me know what you thought of this chapter down in the comments below. Was it good? Was it bad? Was it average? I'm kind of in the average camp right now. I'm a little hyped for it, but it's average. I'm waiting for the fight. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more Hajime no Ippo related content. And for everyone new and old, welcome and welcome back. It's your boy Lohali, and I will see you next video.